Mark here from Bulgaria today. Um, talk a little bit about oppressed versus oppressing bodies. So this is um, a distinction <clears throat> I first had pointed out, I think, by Strozzi Heckler when I was uh, with him in Cyprus. Well, essentially, uh, one common way of um, distinguishing between different types of embodiment, so not just the physical body, of course, but the body is a key part of who we are, um, is to look at where a culture has come from in terms of whether it's been dominating and oppressing and invading. Um, so examples of this would be USA, UK, uh, Russia, and uh, it's a little bit complicated because of trauma, but Israel as well, um, or being oppressed. So it's countries that have been invaded, that have been dominated. So for example, I just spent quite a bit of time in Latvia and Lithuania. Um, so these are countries that have been invaded many times. I'm currently in Bulgaria, which is why I was thinking about this, which was ruled by the Ottoman Turks for about 500 years and then essentially was under the yoke of the Russians, if unofficially, uh, for some time. Um, of course, the Palestinians. Um, and and the, an interesting one is the Irish, my own, my own family background in relation to the British. Um, yeah, so what we tend to see is in countries that have been dominating, um, is a kind of overconfidence, so a certain arrogance or a pushiness um, or a forward weightiness. We see that with the Americans, um, um, and also a taking up space. So power generally tends to uh, express in the body as like taking up space. So the kind of man spreading has become very famous. Um, now, aside from the physical reasons for that, uh, that, a lot of that is about taking up space, saying, you know, I don't care if anyone sees me, this is all mine, I own the room. Um, so that's a kind of gendered version of a similar thing in terms of how power shows up in the body. Um, taking up space, coming forward, being seen, being pushy, standing tall, standing to one's full height. <clears throat> um, this tends to be associated with cultures of dominance, cultures of oppression, cultures of empire. Different versions of this, of course, you know, Russian and British embodiments, pretty different from an American embodiment, but there's commonalities, there's commonalities. I know I have that in my own being, and part of being British um, is that arrogance is kind of there, and we're, we're famous around the world for a certain haughtiness, yeah, which is part of that. So on the other hand, we can look at the kind of defeated body, the collapsed body, um, the body which says, you know what, I've given up, and there's nothing I can really do here, um, so I better just kind of play small, so kind of smallifying, as Paul Linden calls it. Um, you'll see that uh, in kind of teenage girls particularly, that kind of role at the end, smallifying. Um, you'll see it in whole cultures, though. Um, there can also be a kind of floppiness in the body, as opposed to like that dynamism of the Americans, or the tension of the Russians, a kind of, uh, yeah? If you think like the body of a kind of, um, like kind of overcooked spaghetti, yeah, that would be the kind of, uh, the kind of slump. I'm seeing that a lot in Bulgaria, kind of can't be botheredness and this kind of apathy of like, well, why should we even try? Because people always steal our stuff kind of thing. And there can be that resentment behind that, though, as well. You'll see this same combination in Hungary. That's another place that's been invaded and oppressed many times, um, which is kind of like there can be a slight depression, a slight can't be botheredness. But then behind that, like, a, you know, I'd get you if I could kind of, um, which can lead to a, um, like a passive aggressive body, does that make sense? So either passive or passive aggressive as opposed to um, assertive or uh, aggressive is, is generally what you'll see. Um, yeah, as I said, it can be complicated by other factors such as trauma, like the Russians and the Israelis are more traumatized than the average Brit or American, for example. Um, so there's that hyper arousal that the Israelis have and there's that tension often that the Russians have. Um, but combined, you'll still see that taking up space, that, that kind of dominance. So, um, yeah, it might be an interesting distinction to think of your own culture. Uh, and there's different ways it can go, you know. So the Irish have a little bit of the can't be botheredness. Um, but there's also humour in Irish, that, that like um, deflecting with kind of humour uh, is like another strategy. So it's not like one way it has to go but you definitely see patterns. And often when I'm in a country, I'm like, oh, okay. So like I was teaching in, uh, was it Latvia, Latvia or Lithuania, Lithuania, and it was like people were very much cautious, like cautious on the back foot. If you stop someone in the street, they're slightly cautious. In my trainings and in body yoga, I'd say 60% of the weight forwards and people would still have 60% of the weight back. That's generally not a problem in Russia, yeah? So um, you, it does express in different ways. You know, it could be weight forwards, weight back. It could be taking up space, not taking up space different ways, but hopefully this is a, a useful distinction. And it's worth looking at some of your own kind of behavior and going, okay, how much of this is a cultural pattern which may be out of date, yeah, which may not no longer serve.